Hallelujah, Mom, let's sing. Let your temple be filled with the glory. Hallelujah. So let your temple be filled.
solution because the only solution is in his power coming in to the scene and taking care of what you're not able to take care of. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. <laughs> oh gosh, our, our granddad went in a room, you know, with that girl that was in the coma. She'd been in a coma for three days. She hadn't responded to nothing, sight, sound, anything. And, and, and uh, when he went to walk in the room, the mother came out. And she said, Brother Edwards, we got a private nurse we've hired to, to keep after her, but said she, she's atheist. She don't believe nothing. And uh, she said, uh, if you want me to let her go before you go in her, I will. Well, he said, go in there and get her out of there because I don't want no unbelief in that room when I pray. Amen. Amen. 
And how many know some of these tongue talkers has got as much unbelief in them as some of these atheists do? They're sitting there wondering what's going to happen. You can't get nothing done if you're wondering what's going to happen. You've got to know that the minute you pray the prayer of faith, the power of God is going through whoever it is. And they let her go. She went out mad and he went in happy. He laid hands on that girl and the word of revelation came up in his spirit and said by, by tomorrow morning she'll be awake. And he turned and told the mother that. How many know that's a little bit different seeing it happen all at once? Because you got to go home based on faith that what you heard in your spirit will come to pass. He went home and woke up three times during the night and all three times the Lord had that girl standing in his face in the spirit and he said he never did pray again. He just raised his hands up off the bed and said, Lord, I thank you that when I go back over there in the morning, she'll be awake. And do you know he went early the next morning to Tampa and when he rounded the corner, her mother came running down that hallway saying, Brother Edwards, guess what? He said, I know what. He didn't have no doubt. Glory to God. I said, he didn't have no doubt. He said, I know what. He said, she came out of that coma last night. She said, Brother Edward, about 3 o'clock this morning, she opened up her eyes, and she's been all right ever since. Can you say amen? How many feel like God can give you a revelation tonight over a situation? You may be seated. How many believe that whatever you're praying about, seeking God for, right here in this service, the Lord can drop the answer? Right down here in your spirit. Or he may call you out and prophesy to you. Or he may, uh, by the laying on of hands, send the surge of the power through you. My God, that will shake you all over. But how many know whatever way he does it is the work of God. And we're open to any way the Lord would have it be done tonight. Praise God. We're so happy to have you here in this service tonight. We're glad to see Sister Pori. She's got some. Folks with her and now tell us who you from. These are friends of mine from Wachula. From Wachula, okay. Rhonda, Lisa, and Rick. Rhonda, Lisa, and Rick. Rick. Well, bless all of you. It's good yeah. to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. And my brother's back here. Praise God. It's always good to see you come in that door. Hallelujah. I'm glad when you can make it. Amen. God is a good God. And what a wonderful time we had in the Holy Ghost this morning. I'm telling you from the opening of the 10 o'clock service, the power and glory of God was so strong in here. Amen. One night is going to get strong enough. We'll bring the morning crowd back in here in the night time. Amen. But that's all right because if we night people on Sunday can kind of cut loose, can't we? And kick our heels and have a good time. Amen. But thank you for being back here in the house of the Lord tonight. Don't forget that this coming Sunday, Brother Lynn Howes uh, from West Virginia will be here ministering the word in both the morning and the evening services. And then... Uh, uh, that he'll be at Sister Betty's Church Sunshine Cathedral in Plant City uh, Friday night at 7 o'clock and Saturday night at 7 o'clock. He'll come in on uh, Friday uh, during the day. We'll pick him up and he'll, I'm sure he'll bless us. I'll tell you that's a wonderful, wonderful preaching of the Word of God. Hallelujah. And of course you can, you can get him weekly uh, on uh, the Impact Channel, isn't that the Impact Channel? On Saturday morning and evening, I believe, he runs two shows now on there. And brother, if you want to get yourself exposed to some deep word preaching, well, you just flip over there and let him minister. You, you'll get very few uh, television channels that will declare that word of grace and power like he will. Amen. That you might have life is the name of his program and it's worth the watching amen but thank god we get him here now and and right here in this meeting i'll tell you last time god used him he spoke some of the most wonderful prophetic words to some people in this place and i believe god is going to use him again so don't forget that's coming up and of course our regular service this wednesday night at 7 30 brother chris done a wonderful wonderful job last night last week 
teaching to us and I'll be back uh, going through the tabernacle series with you. We'll be doing the golden lampstand this Wednesday at 7.30. Amen. We already did the altar and the labor and now we're going to go into the holy place with a golden lampstand being the first. You don't want to miss that. Oh God, there's some of the blessed, most blessed spiritual truths in that are just light your fire. Amen. So you want to be here, but we're here tonight and we're tuned into heaven and ready to receive from the presence of the Lord. If you'd be so kind to get an offering ready to bring to the Lord, we bless every one of you as you give in Jesus' name. Amen. something that is eternal, something that is lasting. We are not in that realm anymore like we used to walk all the time, this roller coaster ride up and down, in and out, happy one day, down the next day. No, 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 there's something in God better for you than that. There's something that will last. There is a glory that fadeth not away. Hallelujah. And we came in here last Sunday and we went through some wonderful scriptures uh, coming to, from 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. I'll just quote the highlights, hit them before we read. I want to read again out of 1 Peter tonight, 1 Peter 1. But we preached about uh, 2 Corinthians 3, where the Bible says that uh, we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory unto glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. And then we came in last Sunday night and talked about how in Mark the ninth chapter, uh, Jesus looked at his disciples and said, Verily I say unto you, there be some of you standing here who shall not taste death until you see the kingdom come in power. And six days later, being the seventh day, he took them up into a very high mountain and there he was changed right before their very eyes until the glory that was within him swallowed him up totally. And he was what? Transfigured right before their eyes. Can you say amen? And there in that glory on one side stood the prophet Elijah. On the other side stood the prophet Moses. And they talked with him concerning his death or concerning the hour of his own glorification in this earth. And we went through how the Lord has taken his people in this day upward into the spirit realm, into a very high mountain. And when he gets us there by the power of his love and his glory and his grace, we're being changed into that same image. Hallelujah. There is a change on tonight, but it's not coming from the outside in. It's coming from the inside out. Amen. The glory of God is going to be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Hallelujah. And it's not the old glory like Moses had that eventually passed away or faded away, but it is an eternal work 
of the Spirit that will not cease. Hallelujah. It's going to take us over, folks. It's going to take our mind over. It's going to take our bodies over. It's going to take our finances over. It's going to take the whole church over. And we are going up into a high place in God and begin to function out of the higher realm of the Spirit and of the anointing. Hallelujah. I don't think there's a person in here that didn't grow up a lot like I did. Just living from revival to revival. Preacher to preacher. Uh, hoping the right one came through and brought, uh, brought the fire with him. But how many know that's not the plan of God? The plan of God is for you, the saints, to carry that glory. Amen. Every day, everywhere, my God, you are the ones chosen in this hour to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and deliver the captive and the oppressed that they might go free. This thing has moved beyond the one man's show. The whole body of Christ must come under the mantle of this great anointing that is for this hour. It is no more preacher in the pulpit and saint in the pew. It is a demonstration, glory to God, of a corporate anointing in this day that is going to fill the earth. Hallelujah. And the glory is here, but now what's filling it is the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So I'm telling you now, the days of you just being a bench warmer and just being a little church member and standing your nice song, God is doing away with the song. He's doing away with the limits. He's taking the fences down. I'll tell you, He's taking the walls down. Even the walls of denominationalism cannot stop the spreading of this glory in this hour. It isn't going to be your clique and his clique and her circle. It's going to be a worldwide demonstration of the power and the anointing of God. Hallelujah. And so with that said, we go back into these scriptures where we read this morning because I had just gotten down to where I wanted to preach a little bit about this inheritance. And I want to read that verse again uh, that we read uh, starting in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to a what? Inheritance. Incorruptible. Undefiled. And one that fadeth not away. Reserved in heaven for you. But we are kept by the, we've been kept. We've been kept through the hour of trial. We've been kept through the hour of suffering. Come on, somebody. You shouldn't be here, but you are. You should have died, but you didn't. You should have been took out a long time ago, but God has spared you and kept you. Why? Because you're ready to be revealed in this last time. Hallelujah. You're not just still here to exist. You're here because you're part of the effective change that God intends to work in this earth. Can you say praise the Lord? Now when we refer to the earth and this planet, we're talking about the creation of God and it's beautiful and there's nothing wrong with it. When we refer to the world, we're talking about the old cosmos system that governs the minds of mankind. That humanistic approach, that masquerade, that facade. The word cosmos is where you get the English word what? Cosmetic. And cosmetic is the cover up. You ladies ought to amen that. Hallelujah. You put a little cover on it, don't you? You kind of spruce it up a bit. Can you say amen? Well, how many of you understand that the world system is not a an eternal system. It's a facade. It's a masquerade. It's something that's got to fall. It's something that's coming down. Oh my God, the, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief of a corner and it's a stone cut out of a mountain without hands. And how many know where it landed? Right on the feet of old Nebuchadnezzar's statue and it crumbled that thing until it fell because there was mixture in the foot of that statue 
and there's mixture in religion and there's mixture in the world system but over here in this new covenant grace of God there is no mixture there is no duality Jesus Christ is Lord over everything over everything there's no mixture in him he's altogether lovely he ain't good and bad he's good he ain't a healer and a killer he's a healer He's not making nobody suffer tonight for their own good. He is a delivering God who is able to do exceeding and abundantly and above all that we ask or think. Hallelujah! How many of you understand that when you're going through something, the way to get through it is to praise Him? Oh, sing anyway. Shout anyway. Preach on, brother. Speak in tongues and magnify God. Get in every service you can and be the one who starts the shout. Hallelujah. Why? Because even though you're headed for a little bit, you're rejoicing for joy unspeakable and full of glory because there's going to be a demonstration of the power and the glory of God. Amen. And so when we speak of this inheritance, we, we've got to understand some things about it because there's a lot of scripture in the Bible about inheritance. And I want you to understand completely tonight that Jesus did not leave us a portion or just a handout. Hallelujah. But he made us sole heirs. We're heirs of the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? Over in Romans 8, the Bible clears a lot of this up. I'll just quote it. You meditate on it. You ought to know that passage real well. He says to us there, we've not received the spirit of bondage again under fear. But we've received what? The spirit of adoption. The adoption means we've been supernaturally placed into this thing. Now Paul calls that in Romans, the 11th chapter being what? Grafted in. And what does he tell us about being grafted in? He tells us that if the root be holy, come on now, so are the branches. In other words, if I'm grafted in and he's the source of my life, then whatever he is, that's what I'm going to be. Now the great preacher watchman Nee went and toured the vineyard and, and, and the guy said this was grafted in at such and such a date and it'd be a big uh, flourishing vine and when he got to the end of it uh, watchman Nee said do you have anything here that's not grafted? And he said no, I wouldn't waste my time on anything that wasn't grafted. He said you see those little wild shoots and those little sparse things growing up all over there? And he said yes. He said they're not grafted. They're wild. Yes. Well, and he said, we don't waste our time on it. And we're going on down a little bit, suddenly watch me. He looked up and there was this old, ancient, big old tree looking vine, just huge, sitting inside and it was all cut out and had a gate around it and it was took care of so beautifully. And watch me. He said, wait a minute, watch that tree right there. What is that? And that uh, vine dresser said to Brother Watchman Nee, that's what we call the father tree. Wow. He said, what is the father tree? He said, everything you just walked through out there came out of that tree. Oh my God, folks. I'm telling you tonight, boy, everything we are, in Him we live, in Him we move, in Him we have our being. He's the source of life eternal. And, 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 and then when we read on in Romans 8, he says, we've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, what? Abba, Father. Now what does Galatians say? It says the Holy Ghost within us cries, Abba, Father. Amen. And he said, the Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the what? Children of God. And if we're children, what are we? Heirs. And if we're heirs, we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Now, that tells us that we have part in the same amount of power and glory and anointing and use of the name and use of the wealth of the kingdom as Jesus the Christ had because we are joint heirs. Hallelujah. 
do you do you have a joint bank account with your wife? Well, then she can go down there and get anything out of that account she wants to. I want you to know your name is on heaven's account tonight, and you can use any amount of power. The wealth of the kingdom is ours. The wealth and riches of His grace is ours. We don't have to go through all that religious mode of trying to prove ourselves worthy to nobody. He has made us worthy and He's made us what? Partakers. Hallelujah. We're not alienated. We're not foreigners. We are not strangers. We are what? Fellow citizens of the household of faith. And you say amen. Then we turn over to Galatians, the fourth chapter, and we find something else out about this inheritance. Even though it's there, even though it's available, even though the whole thing is ours right now, there ain't nobody going to walk in it until they come into mature sonship in God. Hallelujah. This is where the message comes in about the unfading of the glory. You can't, you can't be one of this in and out, up and down, running around like a child. Hello. Paul clears this all up in 1 Corinthians 13. He tells us that when I was a child, I spake like a child. And I what? Understood as a child. But when I became a what? Man, I put away Childish things. Now we know in Hebrews the fifth and sixth chapter when Paul got ready to preach to the people concerning the priesthood of Melchizedek, he could not preach to them what he wanted to say to them because they were what? Dull of hearing. He said they were babes. He said at the time you ought to be teachers, you come on now church, you have need that another teach you. Hello? And then when he got down into Hebrews 6, what did he say? He said, leaving the principles of doctrine. That means every service you can't get up and preach. You need to get saved and delivered because most of them 50 people out there have been saved for 40 years. Hallelujah. You've got to preach as the Spirit leads you, but you've got to get into deeper waters, deeper realms. Every service can't be a fundamental lesson. There are people out there that are wanting to go deeper in God. They're wanting to grow up into the higher realms of the Spirit. And for that reason, Paul said, when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that another teach you. He said, strong meat belongeth unto them that are what? Full of age who have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. How many I want the Holy Ghost tonight to improve on your spiritual senses until you are keenly aware of everything that is going on in the supernatural world tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Part of walking in this thing is having keen senses in the Spirit. Being able to detect when a shift happens. Not letting anything pass you by. Being there on the cutting edge for every new thing that God is doing in this hour. But that's not going to happen for some because they're so hung up in the old age. Hallelujah. They refuse to see that God has broke out of the box. Oh God, Shonda and has loosed himself out into a place of glory and is calling all of a church who has an ear to hear what the Spirit has to say in this hour to come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not. Get out of that mixture. Get out of all of that doctrine. Get out of all that old order and come out here and let me teach you this glory, this eternal way of glory. Hallelujah. And this is what is said because in Galatians 4 we find out that the Son, even though he be heir of all things. He deferreth nothing from a what? Servant. Praise God. He's a son, yes. We're that by birth tonight. How many have got the birth of the Spirit, the born again? Then you're a son by birth. Now how many understand 
that, that that son had to go through a growing up stage. He had to come to maturity. Well, glory. And believers have got to mature. What used to bother you five years ago ought not to bother you tonight. What used to make you have a, a spell, you know, and get you all upset or not to even move you tonight. What used to make you weep and cry and go into fear and unbelief had not to do that to you tonight. There should have been some growth in your walk with the Lord. Hallelujah. Preachers, pastors all over this world tonight have to stifle down what God is showing them to try to fit the mold of immature minds who won't get out of the box and listen to what God is saying in this hour. And I'm telling you, God is calling a people. Hallelujah. I said God is calling a people by name and leading them out of all of that. Listen, this is what the Scripture said in John 10. He said, My sheep know my voice and are stranger. They will not follow. And He calleth His own by name and leadeth them out. Now the picture that's drawn there is that in the nighttime, or when the shepherd needed to go into town, there were there were holes in that town that every a shepherd could leave his flock and have it watched over until he got ready to, to take them up again. And when he got ready to take them up again, it's impossible to go in the middle of that mess and say, that my sheep, his sheep, her sheep, there ain't no way to do it. They all look too much alike. But those sheep know the voice of their shepherd. And when he utters his voice, all oh, those sheep that are here, they'll follow him. Now how many know that our shepherd in this hour is lifting up his voice and calling us into something deeper and we who have an ear to hear what the spirits say are hearing the voice of the Father saying come out from among them. Many of you tonight are here because you heard that voice say come out. There's folk listening to us tonight. God is calling them right now. Get out of that bondage. Get out of that fear. Get out of all that uh, that unbelief. Get out of all that uh, bo that box that binds you. That confinement. All those limits and boundaries that are set by mankind. Hallelujah! The son is an heir, but he's no different from the servant, as long as he stays in childhood form. And that's why Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke like one. I understood like one. But when I became a man, somebody said, praise the Lord. Jesus looked at Peter one day and said, Peter, you're going to reach a place. He said, right now you go where you want to. And you wear what you want to. But he said, there's coming a day when you're going to stretch out your hands and another is going to clothe thee. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, I feel the Holy Ghost. He said, and then another is going to lead thee. He wasn't, I'll tell you, I used to, when I was a kid, hear preachers preach that, and they said that was called getting old, and it meant you wouldn't be able to take care of yourself. How many know God's bigger than that? God ain't in somebody getting to where they can't take care of themselves. He was saying to Peter, you go walk this thing out, and there's going to come a day when another power, oh my God, another realm of the Spirit is going going to clothe thee. Hallelujah. And, and he said when it does, it's going to lead you. It's going to walk. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when we finish that out, he, he goes on down and, and, and tells us in Galatians 4 that he deferred nothing from a servant, but is under what? Tutors and governors. Tutors and governors. Now, how many know God has sent divine government into the church? How many understand that in Ephesians 4 there are five hand ministries in operation? The hand ministry. What is it? Say it with me. The, the, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. That's the full hand of God at work in the church. The thumb, I've told you this, is the stability. That's the apostolic mandate on men of God who bring stability to anything they walk into. There is the, the, the prophet who points that's the pointing through your points uh, into the direction that God is leading the church. The evangelist is the longest finger because it reaches out of the church walls and reaches out into the world. 
with it and the pastor is the ring finger married uh, to the church uh, and the pinky is the teacher because it's the only one you can fit in your ear. Hallelujah. They're not in ranking order. They don't, they're not a totem pole deal. It's not about who's higher than the other. In fact, you can operate in all five of those offices. It's not about ranking. It's about perfection coming into the body of Christ. Why has that ministry been given to the church? For the perfecting of the saints, the maturity, the growing up of the body of Christ and for the working of the minister that we all come into the unity of the faith and grow up into Him who is the head of the church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you blessed by the word tonight? Do you understand God's doing more than just trying to tickle you, you know tickle you and make you feel good once in a while. He's trying to bring you into this thing and let it take you over. It'll swallow you whole. It'll work folks. The kingdom of God's not here in this earth to bargain. It's here to take over. It's here to send forth a mandate of the sons of God in this earth that we have been given dominion and authority and power and we are not some suffering bunch of victims who just gets kicked around like a ball. We are here to make a mark in this earth and to set a standard of perfection and resurrection order. Amen? And so he said, He's under tutors and governors when? Till the time appointed of the Father. Hello? Till the time appointed of the Father. Well, what happened? He goes on further. And I'll read that one verse to you. Don't turn there. Just let me read it to you. I'll have it read before you get there. He said, even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. Now, I can tell you that's as good as saying our mind was bound. We had the wrong mindset. We had the wrong outlook. We had the wrong perception. We were we were we were bound in our thinking. We were bound in our seeing, our perception of how we perceive this thing. And so what happens? It says, when the fullness of time was come, something entered on the scene that would destroy that bondage and would release the body of Christ to come up hither into this realm of God. What happened in the fullness of time? God sent forth a son made of a woman born under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. And because ye are sons, God won't let you remain in your infantile, immature state. He has sent forth the Holy Ghost in you. And that Holy Ghost, while you're trying to settle down in your little life and live out your little circle of life, He is coming up in you crying out of your spirit, Abba, Father, my Father, I've got a connection. Somebody say, I've got a connection. Say it out of your mouth right now. I'm connected to something. It's bigger than what it looks like. It goes beyond what I presently see with my natural eye. I'm connected to something that's much bigger. Hallelujah. Much bigger, much bigger. See, you're over there in your little circle, and Johnny won't do this, and, 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 and Jenny won't do that, and, 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 you know, and, and the other one won't do this. And in your world, that's all there is, just that little circle where nobody ain't doing what you want them to do. And, and, and your house, you know, is falling apart, and your money is just going down the drain, and your health is sinking, and that's your little world. And you can walk in it till you just walk or run out, going in circles, halting between two opinions, driving yourself mad and crazy. And then when you go to church, you just cry out to God. Bless your heart. You think you're doing right, but it ain't right. You sit there and cry out to God in this pitiful moaning state, just like God don't know nothing. And you've got to fill Him in every week on all the details. And by the time you get 
get through filling him in your face about as big as my little finger right there because you spoke so much doubt and unbelief. That's your world. But if the Spirit kicks in on the inside of you and begins to cry out out the Father, He'll lift you up he lift you up into another realm and you'll start seeing, wait a minute, I can leave all that behind me. I can walk out of all that. God's got this. He'll handle every one of them. But I must pursue this thing that is calling my name. That is calling out to me. And so he says that you're, because that spirit cries out, what happens? It separates something called servanthood and sonship. Because the next verse says, Thou art no more a servant, but a son. And how many know the sword of the Spirit has to come in and cut that servanthood? Now, I want to I say something here. The, the Bible teaches two different kinds of servanthood. There's the servanthood such as, as, as being just a slave to something, being bound by something. But there's also a bond servant who, who chooses. Holy. And in that retrospect, that's a good thing. That, that, that's us wanting to be bound to the Lord. We're servants of the Most High God. But I'll tell you, I know what I'm not a servant to. I refuse to serve fear, doubt, unbelief. And so the Bible says the Spirit of Christ comes in us and cuts away that He makes the division, the separation there. Thou art no more a servant, but a son. Come on now. And the Son is what? An heir of God through Christ. Come on now. And when you knew not God, He said, You did service unto them which by nature are, are no gods, but after you have known God, or rather are known of God. How turn ye again? Now here He's going to preach a word to the believers. How turn you again to what? Those weak and beggarly elements. Folks, Listen, somewhere in this thing you get swallowed up to the point that you feel, realize there ain't nothing else for you. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. What's the first thing we always see with Israel? Every time it didn't go right, they wanted to turn back. Yeah. And there are believers right now who talk in tongues every Sunday, but the least little old trial or tribulation, they always talk about turning back. How many know you got to get deep enough that there ain't no turning back in you? There ain't nothing in you that can move you. And how many believe you're being brought to that place in God tonight where you have such sure footing? Now, I want to take you one more place in Ephesians, the first chapter. Because the Bible tells in Ephesians 1 and verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath what? Blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now the next thing says, According as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. Come on now. And then told us that after He chose us out, and now here we are in this world, this earth, and then He tells us we are being adopted back in, that is placed back in, to that glory which we came out of. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's been a journey, total circle. We come out of Him, we're going back into that glory that we came out of. And you say, praise the Lord. Now we see this in Jesus because Jesus was God that manifested in the flesh. Amen. God became a man. Oh, praise God. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself. Now, He become flesh. Hallelujah. Went right out of the Father, came into this earth for three and a half years. He manifested the glory of that realm. Then in John 17, he puts on the office of a royal high priest and prays an intercessory prayer. First of all, he says, Father, the hour has come. 
glorify me with that glory that I have with thee. Come on, somebody, before the world ever was. Now, over and over in his ministry, he had attempts to assassinate him, and every time they tried to, he would disappear or vanish out of their midst, and they couldn't find him no more. And the, the scripture would say under that, because his hour was not yet come. What hour was the Bible talking about? The hour of his glorification when he would be received back into that glory that he had before the world ever was. Hallelujah. It was going back into that original plan. And I'm telling you tonight that Ephesians 1 tells us sons of God that we're not just roaming around down here trying to figure out where we fit. But God has ordained a place and a glory for us to go into. Hallelujah. We're not lost. And I'll tell you something else. We're not sinners. Hallelujah. We're not sinners. We're not wayfaring pilgrims. We're not a bunch of people who don't know where we're headed. My God, somebody say praise the Lord. We're part of a plan. We're part of a plan that God has ordained before the foundation of the world. And he said, then after that, he read down a little further. He said, there's, a, there's something being unveiled. There's a mystery being unveiled. Part of that mystery is that the Lord is going together in one body. Hallelujah. And make of himself of twain. Say it with me. One new man. Both all things which are, come on now, in heaven and in earth. So this inheritance connects us to the heavenly realm. Oh, glory to God. By this inheritance, we have access granted to the throne of God. We're able to minister from a heavenly realm even though we're in an earthen body. Well, Lord, hallelujah. We, oh, glory to God. There's a mediator here tonight. Between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, he took heaven by one hand, earth by the other, and rejoined the divide. He connected us. Amen. And so the Bible says that he's predestined us unto this adoption, to the praise of his glory, and that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and in earth, even in him. And, and, and listen, Philip's translation of that says that everything in heaven and earth shall find its perfection and fulfillment in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This thing's coming to a consummation hour. Yes. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe that God has had a plan all along from the beginning and He has never deviated from that plan? Yes. What was that plan? To fill this earth with the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. How is He doing that? By people like me and you. Yes. Come on now. In the Old Testament, God got in things. God got in a bush. God got in a rock. God was in Aaron's and Moses' staff. God was in Aaron's rod when he put it in there. All of these things, symbols, types, and shadows. But how many know that we're not in the realm of types and shadows anymore? Jesus is the fulfillment of every type and every shadow. Somebody say amen. And he came into this earth to announce that he had never deviated off of that original plan. God don't have a plan B. There are no emergency exits. Hallelujah. This thing is of God and it's going to prosper and and come to fruition. He's always had a plan for the church. And I'm a little worried about some people's idea of that plan. Because they tend to think that God's idea for the church was that He's bringing her to the end and she's going to be the weakest, pitifulest, poorest by God most mangled and, and messed up and just barely enough of us to make it and all that. That ain't what God's plan is. Read Ephesians 5. It'll tell you what God's plan for the church is. To present it unto Himself a glorious church not having spot, wrinkle, blemish or any such thing. How's He going to do it? By the sanctifying of the washing of the water of the Word. Amen. So what are we into tonight? We're in the truth. That's the only thing Chris said it this morning. That'll sit 
sets you free. What is the truth? That the church, the real church, the ecclesia, the call out ones of God will hear this upward call and will be lifted up into a high dimension of the Spirit of God and will come into divine anointing and perfection in this last hour. She won't be weak. She'll be mighty. She won't be broke. She'll be wealthy. She won't be sick. She'll walk in divine health. Hallelujah to God. Oh my Lord, excuse me while I shout a lot. Thinking about the glory of it. Hallelujah. Jesus ain't going to set head of a sick, watered down body that ain't got no power. My Lord, he's setting the head of a militant, powerful, forceful army of God that brings restoration everywhere the soles of their feet. Oh my God. And then he tells us that we've, been, that we've obtained this inheritance because we were predestined unto the purpose of him who worketh all things according to the, after the counsel of its own will. There are things for the church, for the people of God, that God has ordained from before the beginning of time. And we are just now having the veil pulled up a little higher so we can... <laughs> It ain't over, it's just begun. It ain't wore out, it's just got its second wind. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Well, do you love Jesus tonight? And then he said, I've got to finish here because I've gone too long already. But the, the, the Bible tells us that after we believe these things, something happened to us. We were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the what? Earnest of our inheritance. Now if you look that word earnest up in the Amplified Bible, it'll tell you we've got the down payment. Yes. The baptism in the Holy Ghost is the down payment. And I don't mean this ugly, but I must say it, sadly enough, many Pentecostal churches don't even see a baptism of the Holy Ghost anymore. You liable to go in a Pentecostal meeting and sit there all night and leave and never see one demonstration. Don't shout me down now of the presence of God. You don't hear no tongues. You don't see no gifts. Ain't nobody getting prayed for. Ain't nobody getting healed. Ain't nobody getting delivered. It's just dead, cut, dry. You're just dried up. Ain't no revelatory word. It's just a bird's nest. Just ghost stories. Just, just old order in operation. But how many know that is not going to produce the manifestation of what I'm preaching to you about tonight? It will take a living expression of the Spirit of God to birth a move such as what I'm preaching on tonight. It'll take a living expression. There's going to be gifts. There's got to be fruit. There's got to be demonstrations. There's got to be manifestations. Can you say amen tonight? There's got to be a glory at the latter house which is greater than that of the former. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. The earnest. Every time you see somebody fall out of the power, dance in the Spirit, speak in other tongues, prophesy or move in any of the other eight gifts of the Spirit, it is God's guarantee to this earth that there will come a time when a people will be glorified from head to foot. The full redemption of God will hit them spirit, soul, mind, and body. God did not pay half on our redemption. Right. He completely and totally bought the whole thing. He didn't save you for you to die with disease. He didn't save you for you to live in poverty. He saved you so so, which is the word for complete and total salvation of the total man. And I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of the Lord. And faithful is he who called you who also will do it. Glory to God. For years and years and years and years people have had the spirit but not had the, the bonuses, the benefits of it, the effects of it. Redemption folks is not just you getting to get out of hell card. It's not just you getting to fly away someday. It's you coming in to a living reality that there's power working on the inside of you that will deliver you so you can deliver that creation out there that is bound. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. God didn't save you just for you to sit in the same spot 
for 30 years and feel a few do dads now and then and say, my, didn't we have church tonight? Some people have seen what we had in here this morning. They'd have thought we had entered into a seven day revival. And yet that's the kind of expressions of glory we hear here on a, on a weekly and daily basis. Why? Because we believe God is up to something in this hour. He is right now producing the manifestation of that glory that faded not away. Hallelujah. Faded not away. Amen. The Holy Ghost. The earnest of it. Then he goes on down and said, Paul did and said, I, I, I'm so overwhelmed. He said, I'm going to get in the Spirit and pray for you now. In fact, he said, night and day the spirits took me over and I can't cease to pray for you. I have to make mention of you always in my prayers, he said. And he said, what are you praying for, Paul? He said, well, first of all, I'm praying, oh my God, that the Spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him would fill your hearts. Come on, somebody. I'm praying that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. You know what enlightened means? Flooded with light. I'm praying for you to get flooded with light. How many know that's talking about getting some Holy Ghost revelation in this thing? How many understand what I'm preaching about? You can't look it up in the commentary. <coughs> you can't search it out in an encyclopedia. You can't go somewhere and get it out of a book or some kind of knowledge of man. But man's knowledge on this matter is passing away and the wisdom of God is taking over. And it's something beyond the reach of humanity. It is a spiritual thing that has to happen in you for you to have your eyes open and enlightened. The Holy Ghost has to do it. Amen. And he said, I want him to know what is the hope of their calling. And I want him to know what the glory of the riches of his what? Inheritance. Now, I want to stop there and say that we just talked about the down payment. Now, he moves into something deeper. He says, take them beyond the down payment. Let them learn what all the riches are. Yeah. That's like you coming in here and me having a box of treasure. And, and, and say giving you a golden vase and saying now you come back later and I, I'll give you I'll give you some more I'll show you all of it this is your down payment you show up next week you come in and it ain't down payment today I just unleashed the whole treasure on that's what Paul said he said you've known the first fruits of the spirit you've had the down payment of this thing but he said I want you now to come by revelation into the knowledge of the riches of this inheritance and he said that you may know what what is the hope of your calling? Glory to God. The glory of His riches. And, 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 and the what did He say next? The exceeding greatness of His power. Yeah. God, part of this inheritance is not just wealth. It's power. Yeah. It's power. Yeah. What kind of power did you inherit? The same power He operated in when He was on this earth. Can you say amen? Yeah. And the highest form of all power is what? Resurrection power. That's the highest level of power you can function at. He said the exceeding greatness. There is a power that exceeds anything the body of Christ has ever operated in. There's an anointing that far greater in manifestation and demonstration than anything we've ever seen or known. I used to love to hear Brother Hagin tell about when he took that one church and that one church he took taught him so much about the supernatural that he never was the same again. He took that church, and they had three sections of pews, and he was used to just people who sat and listened to him preach and teach and enjoyed it, but just that's it. But that church was full of the Holy Ghost. They had a piano player that would jump up and take off dancing and the piano would keep playing. Wow. Hallelujah. And you, if you have trouble with somebody running a little bit, that'll bother you bad if somebody gets up and you see them piano keys yeah. keep on playing. They had a woman get in the spirit and walk right off the altar bench right. and walk right across the air to another altar. I mean, they changed his life forever. He said they'd all be sitting there with their eyes closed and wouldn't know what the other one was doing and said the section all over here, everybody in that section would jump up and dance in the spirit and as soon as they'd sit down in the middle, it'd pop up and do it. And as soon as they sat down, the other would pop up and do it. 
And so when he seen how tuned in they were to the supernatural, he himself decided that they would have these special meetings where they, all they did was come in and sit and wait on the presence of the Lord to do whatever it wanted to do. Oh, he said the singing, the prophetic singing, the manifestations of the glory did beat all you ever seen. He began to read every day those prayers. I just read one, two, quoted one to you in Ephesians 1. The other was in Ephesians 3 where the Paul prayed that we'd comprehend with all saints. He read them every day. He said, "He said I'd dart out the door and go somewhere. I'd come in, kneel. By, and said I left my Bible open on the altar. I'd go kneel on the altar, read those prayers I'm right out loud." He said, after a year of doing that, he come home one day after God opened up heaven and revealed to him all this stuff and told his wife, "said It's a wonder the deacons hadn't had to come by and tell me to get in and out of the rain." He said, "I never in my life knew I was missing so much. How many believe there are believers all over this earth right now that don't have a clue?" as to what they are missing but it, it get over here in that spirit of wisdom and revelation and let the Lord enlighten their understanding they'll start living a new life they'll start experiencing things they've never experienced before I tell you folks you can have that old well, I wish you wash this stuff you want to but I'm going after that glory that faded not away I'm looking for a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory will you stand and out let's worship him hallelujah we praise your name, Father. We glorify you, Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 Amen. That, that brother, was it Rick, brother? Is that your name? Come, let me minister to you. Is that, is that your... Uh, wife, will you come and let me minister to both of you? Because by the Spirit and the Word of the Lord, I can tell you that, that everything's changing. Everything's undergoing a major change. There's a shift happening. And you're willing to go with it, and the Lord's going to make it happen. You're, you're, one thing is you're fed up. You're tired of seeing the same old. And you're ready for to get out on the edge of that thing and just dive off into the supernatural. And you're praying for such. You're seeking God even together. You're binding your faith together because you want to see something greater, mightier happen. And it's coming. It is at the door. It is knocking this night. Saith the Spirit of the Lord, the supernatural is catching up to your faith. And there's going to be an overtaking and a coming together. And I'm telling you, the words out of your mouth are going to start flowing like water. It's just going to be pouring just like that rain started pouring a while ago. That's the way you're going to be talking just like normal. And all of a sudden the rain is just going to come in a torrent. And the Spirit of God is going to anoint your tongue and make it the pen of a ready rock. And you're going to speak in a new realm and in a new dimension, thus saith the Lord. There's new bread coming to your table. You've been willing to take your hands and just throw the old loaves away and believe God to put something supernatural on there. And that is exactly what is getting ready to happen. And the Lord is getting ready to bake some new bread, fresh bread, heavenly bread, and lay it in your hands, and you're going to break it, and you're going to serve it, hallelujah, and you're going to see growth, and you're going to see that things that have been hard, and have been so tedious, and you've had to just keep your hands tied up with it, the Lord said, I'm breaking that burden and lifting it off of you, and you're going to experience a rest like you've never seen before. The labor is leaving, and the glory it's coming on the sea. The Lord God, raise your hands and let me seal it tonight by the laying on the hand of the most of Oh, Woo, a new and a living way. And I see the Lord touching your health, my sister. I see a fresh healing stream flowing through your body. There is strength from heaven coming unto you. There's a lot of little things out of order that's coming under order while I'm speaking. Right now, the healing virtue goes. <laughs> there it is. 
and you're receiving a, a flesh a touch of healing in your body. Thus saith the Lord, hallelujah. You're going to get stronger and you're going to get more rest and you're not going to feel washed out all the time. But new strength is coming under your body right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen, 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 amen. Amen. Come on, brother. Let me give you the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. You've been faithful and you've worked hard. But the Lord said you're going to work less and you're going to make more money than you've ever made. There's a great change coming. God's going to honor your hard work. And it ain't going to be that way forever. There's coming a point where this thing is going, you're going to be recognized. That's what I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying. You're going to be recognized by somebody who knows how to make the shift happen. And when they do, you're moving so far up, you don't even need to try to guess how far, because it's beyond. Uh, it's beyond anything you can ask or think. It'll be a higher position. It'll be a higher place. It'll be higher pay. But the workload will be less, and the stress will be less, and it won't be having to hustle to get it. You will have time to do what you desire to do, and there'll be more time for ministry than there's ever been in your life to save the Lord. In the name of the Lord, we release the glory of the Lord upon him in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 That sister in the black, come let me minister to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to know, Mother Spirit, that the Lord is working some things out that you've been trying to get straight and out and that some of it involves other people and there ain't listening to nothing you're telling them. But the Lord is going to intervene and God is going to go ahead of you and make a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. And it's not going to be a struggle and it's not going to be a fight. But besides all that, that's just an extra for what I'm going to tell you. The real touch is coming in your body tonight. From head to foot, every joint of your body is fixing to undergo a whole, all I hear is a, a, a whole cushion. And the Lord's going to wrap you in a cushion of His glory tonight. The pain is leaving you. The pain is leaving you. The pain is leaving you. The pain you've been in excruciating pain. You had to set up at night with pain. But I'm telling you, it's leaving you right now. Sunday, it's coming out of your body in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to run and not be weary. You're going to walk and not faint. You're going to mount up with wings as eagles. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Woo, how many feel the spirit? Tonight. Hallelujah. Now the rest of you, saints of God, come step on over into this glory and let me minister to you right now. Hallelujah. 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 I heard the Lord say, some of you's taking steps you ain't never took before. Some of you's getting ready to walk. Some steps you ain't never took before. We've been talking all day about taking a trip. You're going to take a trip and you're going to walk with it. Shut up, my mama, my Brand new steps. Brand new steps. Woo! I'm stepping out. I'm 
Brother Lord would say, sit back and watch me work. Watch me in these next few days as I turn the wheel and the wheel within the wheel starts to operate. Watch me from this night's faith begin to bring things to pass before your very eyes, saith the Spirit of the Lord. You shall this very week see things turn completely around. And yea, a great manifestation shall be thine, saith the Spirit of God. So take this night as the spring off. Uh, take this night as that which has launched you uh, and lay hold of the supernatural in the days to come. And watch me work it out even before your very eyes. Uh, you shall see an unfolding and an unveiling of my plan, saith God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm sure glad I come to church tonight. The call. You know, Pastor, and you were praying for this sister right here and speaking words to her. I saw the Spirit. You know that scripture that talks about the bat overflowing? Yes. I saw this big, huge bat. It just opened up. All right. And I believe the Lord, and He's just pouring out. Pouring out. Healing. Yes, healing's everywhere. Glory to God. Glory to God. How many believe you're going to see the whole body of Christ come into divine health? I'm telling you, I've told you ever since I started these messages, this thing I'm talking about, the whole goal is to swallow us up, to consume us. Can you say amen? And you need to get you some, some good faith builders and and, and, and start reading after men and women of God who stepped out of the box. Hallelujah. Amen. And you could do some reading after John Lake and find out that he'd bring them in there and put them under the x-ray machine, lay his hands on them, and when he did, they could watch that bone on that machine respond to the Word of God. And you say amen. When my granddad uh, needed inspiration, he always went and picked up uh, Brother Wigglesworth's book, Ever Increasing Faith. That's the first one that ever came out. And bless his heart, I've got one over there now. He had, and it so wore out the covers off of it. And some pages you can't even read because he's underlined so many times and wrote so many uh, scriptures around it. But see, when all that came out, they didn't nobody know the power of God like that. Now they seen healings, but to read a man picking up dead people and bringing them back to life again, that inspired their faith. Can you say amen? Yeah. You need people in your life that inspire yeah. your faith. Yeah. And you need to flush some folks that tear your faith down. And if you're having to stay high in faith and believe God for stuff, especially when you're believing through pain and different things, you need to, you definitely need to steer clear yes. of folk that you know is just a potty mouth. Yes. Amen. 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 You can tell them your ears ain't garbage cans. Amen. And you need to stop, you need to stop having contact for a while with people. I know you just can't not have contact with some folks as necessary, but uh, as much as you can, only stay around people who are going to lift you up and not tear you down. Can you say amen? And a lot of people's always trying to balance out faith with wisdom, but it ain't God's wisdom, it's man's wisdom. And they ain't doing a thing in the world but tearing it down. Can you say amen? Well, they'll say, I'm trying to help you. Well, you're not helping them. You're killing them because you're speaking unbelief and you can't do that. You've got to talk the words of God. You've got to speak, amen, the words of the word. The word has to speak the word, amen. And so thank God for people of like precious faith that whenever you're going through it, they don't come in and arm you up and say, bless your heart and all this mess. We're not doing that to people. I get accused of being uh, uh, of not taking enough time with people because I don't do such as that. But I ain't going to start doing it because if you ever start doing that, you have crippled that human being and they won't be able to get out of that until they break loose from all that. 
that that all that uh, all that uh, pity and patting that ain't where it's at. You need people who come in and even when they're when you're trying to fall apart on them, they're laughing and getting you up and telling you come on and let's go. Amen. Well, glory. When we're down, of course, we don't like people like that because we want them to sit down and talk about how low we are. But how many know iron sharpens iron? You gotta have something to rub you up. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. We just just thank God for you being here and, and, and uh, uh, you. You precious folk are welcome back anytime. We'd love to have you in the services and we just bless you in the name of the Lord. We'll be back Wednesday night at 7.30 ready again to receive from His presence. Amen. Hallelujah.